Hello and welcome to Runtesters, my name's Nick and this is our review of the Apple Watch Ultra after one week. So Kieran, Mike and I have all been testing out the Apple Watch Ultra for a week ahead of today when the embargo lifted on reviews of the watch. I'm going to give you kind of a more detailed impression than the first look, but we will also come back and give an updated full review down the line. So the Apple Watch Ultra is obviously an entirely new addition to Apple's range. It sits above the Series 8. It's a lot more expensive. It's $799 or £849, pounds, almost double the price of the Series 8. And it's just a bigger brighter, more rugged watch with a bigger battery life that's really more focused on the sports market than the classic Apple Watch. Uh, so it's got a 49mm case which is obviously bigger than the 41, 45mm options in the Series 8. The case is made of titanium and actually wraps around the screen of the watch which is made of sapphire crystal to try and protect it from kind of bumps and uh, bruises. And then you've got little kind of extra titanium sections to cover the buttons on the right hand side of the watch. On the left hand side of the watch there's an entirely new button called the action button which you can set to a variety of controls but I think the most important for our audience is probably the workout mode where it acts as a lap button. A lap button on an Apple Watch. It's finally happened. The screen is very bright. It's up to 2000 nits. Apple says it's twice as bright as the screen on the Series 8 and obviously it's a bit larger as well because of the bigger case. There are three mics on board and a couple of speakers and all the kind of usual sensors you'd expect including an altimeter and a compass, a blood oxygen saturation sensor, all that kind of stuff and the watch now has a temperature sensor as well to monitor your skin temperature during the night. You're getting dual frequency GPS on the Apple Watch Ultra and it has a WR100 water resistance rating and you can go diving with it up to depths of 40 meters and the battery life is double what you get on the Series 8. It lasts up to 36 hours of kind of general use, uh, 12 hours of GPS is what it's listed as and there's a lower power mode that extends the general use to 60 hours on the watch. Uh, along with the new watch Apple also released some new bands to go with the Apple Watch Ultra. There's the trail loop which we haven't been able to test which is kind of a soft loop that looks a bit like the sports loop with a pull tab to tighten it up. Uh, this is the Alpine loop which is a nice fabric material and a hook clasp and then there's the ocean band which is more rubbery silica material with again a metal buckle on it. Along with the new hardware, the Watch OS 9 software update has just landed and that brings with it a massive amount of upgrades to the sports tracking on Apple Watches in general. You're getting a whole load more stats in the native workout app, things like split pace. It's also going to be able to measure running power from the wrist. There's a multi-sport mode that you can adjust to the different disciplines you're doing and a structured workout builder. And there's even going to be a track mode uh, available on the watch later this year. It comes to the US first. Other upgrades with the software update include to the Compass app, which now allows you to do things like set waypoints and track your steps back to where you started from. Uh, and there's a whole load of diving stuff on the watch as well, uh, which we're not really going to cover in this review. <laughs> so if you're looking for diving information about the Apple Watch Ultra, hopefully someone else has covered it, but this is really going to be about running, I'm afraid. So in terms of that design, obviously this is the biggest Apple watch we've had so far. Now on my skinny wrist, these big watches can look and feel very big, but ultimately I've kind of got used to it. I think the initial, the first time or the first day I had it on, it did feel like a big watch to wear, but it doesn't weigh heavy. It didn't weigh heavy in that kind of those couple of runs that I did most importantly. So from that point of view, it's been absolutely fine for me. Now I've had two straps to kind of use. One strap I had, um, was too long so ultimately I've kind of settled on this kind of ocean band that's obviously more kind of swim kind of centric in terms of how Apple wants you to use it but ultimately it's been absolutely comfortable for me I've worn it day and night um, for sleep tracking and all of my runs and that long run as well that I've done in this it was absolutely fine from a comfort point of view um, in terms of that screen it is brighter um, and that I think is really important because obviously these types of screens, these, you know, it's not quite an AMOLED screen, but it's very similar to an AMOLED screen. And those, these types of screens can struggle in kind of those bright outdoor kind of conditions. With this, that extra brightness does make a major difference. Um, I think based on my experience, I did use it kind of early evening when it was getting a little bit darker on one run, and it was absolutely fine in terms of that vibrancy, in terms of that brightness that you're getting here. Um, obviously, you're getting one extra button on here compared to the... Um, Previous Apple Watches or the current, you know, the smaller Apple Watches, this kind of action button, which you can assign different features to. Now, I think, you know, of all the features that I've found most useful in that kind of time is the fact it makes it easier to pause a workout. Now, previously, you've had to kind of swipe through screens to pause a workout or there is a kind of combination or has been a combination of uh, kind of buttons. Um, 
and the action button on the previous Apple Watches. By putting this second button on the side, you can kind of hold the two bottom buttons, which just feels easier to do um, out when you're running. So for me, that from a running perspective, that is kind of an ideal feature. It's not a groundbreaking feature. Loads of watches have been allowed you to physically use a button to kind of pause the workout. And why it's been a bit more complicated for Apple to kind of um, solve, I'm not sure. But the fact they have addressed it, that is a good thing from me. So I like the design of the new Apple Watch Ultra. Like It's not quite as elegant, I don't think, as a classic Apple Watch with that bigger case, and in particular the jutting out the metal on the side, or the right side there to cover the buttons. But actually, I thought that would bother me a lot more, but it hasn't. I really liked using it. I think it's a really attractive watch, and I've enjoyed wearing it all the time. It's still light and comfortable to wear you know, at all times, despite being a bit bigger. If you're coming from things like the Epics or Garmin's, then it will seem very lightweight and enjoyable, but maybe if you're coming from past Apple Watches, it will seem a bit bigger on the wrist. Uh, screen is fantastic. It's very bright in all conditions. Even in the always-on mode, you can easily see your stats on the run. I've had no concerns with that at all. Um, but the straps I'm less keen on, the new straps. Like The, the bands available with the Apple Watch have always been a very strong selling point of it, in my opinion. Uh, and the two I've tested, the Ocean Band and the Alpine Band, have both just been a little bit of a faff um, to set up and actually quite hard to tighten you know, enough when you're about to go for a workout and you want good snug fit on the wrist so so the fact that you can just use older straps from the larger kind of series watches so the 44 or 45 millimeter bands they fit perfectly well on the apple watch ultra and that's probably what i'll use in general because yeah i'm not a huge fan of the new bands i'd say although i haven't tried the uh, trail loop which is probably going to suit me a bit better as it's aimed more at running so on design then the apple watch ultra i think this is a nice looking watch actually i really quite like the kind of rugged eyes kind of beefed up look to the Apple Watch. If anything, I've kind of always felt like the normal Apple Watch feels a bit kind of dainty in a way. So for what I do in terms of kind of ultras and kind of more sort of trail running, I think this is really quite nice. It's about the same weight as the Garmin Enduro that I'm used to wearing. So that's also a great thing. They've managed to get a lot in here. I mean, it still does feel sort of chunkier on the wrist as far as I'm concerned than some other watches. If you're used to running with a kind of Forerunner or some of those lighter end Apple watches then this is going to feel like a little bit of a chunk extra found it easy to control the display is wonderful as with all Apple watches you know that's one of the really strong points I find it very hard to sort of get excited about an action button which kind of takes you through to a shortcut but that's maybe something that because I'm used to sort of using a Garmin you know, that feels like something that's been around for a long time to Apple users maybe that's going to be a, a new and shiny thing that's quite exciting this kind of beefed up digital crown found it easy enough to use the only thing I will say is I found that it got caught a little bit on my arm a few times. So when I was trying to rotate it, it would get caught on my arms. I don't think I've got particularly sort of chubby arms, but that was something that I noticed. Didn't always happen. It happened sometimes, a little bit frustrating. Also, I had to kind of, um, I found the kind of sensitivity rolling through workout screens. It didn't always flick down every single time I did it. And sometimes I was finding I was having to roll it once or twice. Uh, but, you know, one of the things I really like, that always on display, super bright, easy to read in all conditions. I thought was really fantastic. The six workout metrics on a single screen as well is nice, although I would like to be able to have a sort of slightly more hierarchical design where you could have one stat bigger than another to make some of them more pronounced and a little bit easier to read. But other than that, on the design, I think it's a really nice looking piece of kit. I wasn't a huge fan of this. Um, we were testing the Alpine strap that has this kind of G hook. I couldn't actually get that to fit kind of nice and snug on my wrist. So I, I think I, I haven't been given the endurance bracelet or the endurance strap, which I think is a bit more standard, like a nylon strap you'll find on the garments, which means you'll be able to get a bit more of a precise fit than you can with this one, which I, I wasn't too, too sure on. So the new sports tracking features you get through watchOS 9 are a massive upgrade to the Apple Watch. Like in the past, I have used the Apple Watch as my main watch, but I've nearly always relied on third-party apps, in particular Work Outdoors, a very, very good app uh, to uh, track all my running with it. That's mainly because I just needed things like lap pace, structured workout builders are important to me, and Work Outdoors also has amazing mapping, which you don't get in the workout app on the watch. We'll come on to that. But... The new stats that have been added and the fact you can you know, set up multiple data screens and all that really does cover off all the key bases you'd need in a running watch. And then it adds some you know, more advanced stuff, things like the native running power, the running technique stacks. Um, so yeah, this is a massive upgrade across the Apple Watch range. And then with the Ultra, you get the cherry on top of the lap button, which is obviously a massive upgrade to running. With it, you can mark segments as Apple calls them, and you can see live segment stats on the watch. So you can see your segment pace, segment distance, and you also get split pace, split distance. So you've got manual and kind of automatic laps there available which is something I really like I do all my workouts and general runs paced on lap pace slash you know split pace and then workouts on segment pace so it's 
really useful to have it available in the native app. You know, it's just a big quality of life uh, improvement that should have been available ages ago, but it is now available on the Apple Watch range. One thing I don't love about the lap button on the Apple Watch is the action button is positioned there. And often when pressing it, I would also press this side of the watch, which is the other button. And if you press those two buttons at once, you pause your workout instead of taking a lap. So <laughs> you have to kind of work out a way to consistently hit just the lap button, but it just takes a little bit of getting used to. The structured workout builder, I think is really good. Even on the watch itself, it's very easy to create workouts, um, even going beyond just, you know, basic repeats. So I, but I have done a basic rep workout of 20 times 60 on 30 seconds off. You get good, accurate info on the watch during each segment. It guides you for it very well. And yeah, there's no real faults at all with the structured workout builder. It's as good as anything I've come across and a very handy addition for runners to have on the watch. Still not entirely perfect, like there's not enough data screens. I don't know why they're limited to three data screens. Cause, yeah, it's not the end of the world. Uh, I haven't really done much testing of the power yet. I don't tend to use running power much, but it's great that it's there on the watch and it's presented quite nicely with the kind of rolling graph you get to track your power output during a run. Uh, the running techniques that so far have been a little bit out of whack with what I get from the Garmin HRM Pro Plus chest strap. I'm not, I'm not so not entirely wowed by those yet. We'll see how those hold up over some longer testing. But in general, uh, I'm really happy with the upgrades to the sports tracking capability of the watch it means that you don't have to go to third-party apps now but one thing that they, they did kind of leave out as i think is easy access to the backtrack feature or waypoints feature when you're within the workout app you can kind of swap between them on the watch but that's a little bit more of a faff i'd love to have like a backtrack screen that you could include there so you could just follow it you know to the start of your run each time and the lack of integrated maps and all that means that work outdoors is still a very attractive option if you're looking at third-party apps because it has very bright color maps that you can use for navigation um which you don't get within the native app as yet. And the other thing it doesn't really have yet is any kind of training analysis. Like Apple's very much, this, the Apple Watch Ultra is very much a tracker, not an analyzer. Like even quite basic sports watches will do a fair bit on this front these days. But, and, and I would say the third party app market hasn't really filled this gap on the Apple Watch that well. There is an app called Athletic, which is quite good. But in general, if you're looking for training analysis, then you are going to be looking at more at dedicated sports watches rather than the Apple Watch Ultra. My take on this really is that Apple has added some things which are great. They're really nice to have. You know, I love the fact that you can use this action button to launch a workout, you know, straight away, or that you can assign different actions during a workout when you press that, like taking uh, a split, basically. You know, before you had to sort of tap the screen with your hand to make that, to take a split. And that was sort of slightly annoying. It was always sort of slightly different, difficult to do. The fact that you can also kind of pause a workout by just holding the two buttons as well is great. I really like the fact that you can see if you've got a GPS hookup before you start running. I also like the idea that if you've run a route more than once, you know, it comes up twice, then goes back, it'll give you the option to kind of race your best time or, or pace that route. Again, fantastic. That's a really nice thing to have if you've got routes that you run regularly. I always tend to sort of think with Apple, they sort of move things on little by little. You know, the inclusion of vertical oscillation, ground contact time and stride length, these are all things that, you know, they've been around for a long time. So I find it quite hard to get excited about them when they add them to the Apple Watch. I just go, thumbs up, well done, you've added that. I think the display screens and the visualizations within the workout app on the watch and now in on the phone, it's come on leaps and bounds, you know, over the years, it's actually now started to be pretty useful. I still do think though, as a running device, the Apple Watch generally really becomes more and more useful when you start to use kind of other apps. So, you know, I quite like popping on Kamut on there, lets me record a route with Kamut and also to run a planned route and then you get kind of better navigation, things like that. Um, so something Apple has added in its latest iOS update is the ability to get kind of advanced running metrics. So these are things we have seen from running watches and now Apple's kind of bringing this into the mix. You can kind of view it in that kind of main activity app along with your other data in your run. So you're looking at things like vertical oscillation, uh, stride length, ground contact time, cadence, all these kind of things that we've started to see other kind of running watches kind of pay a bit more attention to. So I was running with that um, heart rate monitor chest strap, which can uh, deliver those advanced running metrics as well. So I had, I kind of had a look at the data and see how they kind of compared and nothing really massively matched up. I think cadence or average cadence is pretty similar in terms of what the two devices delivered. Stride length as well, but things like power readings were different. Um, I think vertical oscillation data was different as well. So there wasn't much kind of similarities in terms of the data that I saw um, in comparison to what that chest strap uh, monitor was delivering in terms of those advanced run running metrics compared to what the Apple Watch uh, was delivering. So I definitely think that's something I want to get a better sense of. Yeah, how useful that data is going to be 
Um, you know, there isn't much actionable insights around it, but you do have that data there if you want to delve into it. But ultimately, is it accurate? I'm not 100% sure on it yet. So GPS accuracy has been a very strong point of recent Apple Watches for me. One of the reasons I used the Series 6 as my main running watch for quite a long period was that it was delivering very reliable GPS tracks compared to the Garmin Phoenix 6 I was using at the time as well. Um, and that's very much the case with the Apple Watch Ultra. The dual band GPS is an improvement on that front. I've been testing it against the Garmin FX2, which has been the most accurate watch I've tested um, ever, actually, this entire year. And the Apple Watch has matched up very well on pacing and distance stats. And the GPS tracks have been great. Even on a little GPS dead spot I know near me that uh, I used to test lots of watches and the Apple Watch is the other one alongside the Epics to really nail uh, a section there where, where lots of watches add some extra distance. I also think there is a bonus to the native workout app being much better on the Apple Watch these days is that when you're using it, it'll keep calibrating the GPS while you're using that. And when I was exclusively using Workout Doors, I would occasionally have to dip in and do a workout using the uh, native running app just to kind of recalibrate the GPS. But now if you're using it all the time, that'll keep you know updating and it should stay very accurate. Uh, I did one session on a running track whilst using the watch and it wasn't quite as pinpoint as the Garmin FX2 in track mode track mode uh, but it was still pretty good you know logging my rep to around the correct distance each time but there is a track mode coming to the watch it's only gonna be in the US at first but that will be great when it does land you know around the world as well it kind of automatically detects you're at a track using the kind of mapping software on the watch and then it will you can choose the lane you're going to run in and get more accurate results. When it comes to GPS I don't really have an awful lot to say about this I found it to be fairly accurate real-time pacing seemed to match my garmin enduro when i was out in real time i found overall the overall distances within that kind of margin for error there was like a, you know within sort of eight to ten percent of what you'd expect when i look back at the routes that i've run on the routes that i have done there were no major kind of gaffes when it came to putting me running through buildings or across fields or in rivers all of those things so it seemed to be pretty good for what the tests that I've done. I have done a couple of runs with the Apple Watch Ultra. Now the first one was a pretty easy kind of couple of miles in it, just going, testing it out against the Garmin Epix 2 in multiband mode. I also had a heart rate monitor chest strap paired to that as well. As, as I was saying, pretty easy going a um, couple of miles before I did my longer run the following day. Um, and in terms of that data, generally pretty fine in terms of the accuracy with distance tracking, I would say again, um, the heart rate monitoring as well kind of you know matched up with the chest strap as well as i said it was a pretty easy going uh, run initially um and then going into that longer run that i did it was i did 22 miles uh that was kind of my one of my long kind of marathon training runs that i did with it um and in terms of that distance tracking there definitely was a bit of disparity in terms of those numbers um I think the, the the Apple Watch Ultra came up a little short uh, in terms of distance tracking compared to the multi-band mode on the Garmin Epix 2. And then from a heart rate monitoring perspective, it, I definitely saw some disparity in the numbers and just in terms of the performance of the heart rate monitoring in general. So obviously I was running a little bit quicker in places in comparison to the, the run before. Um, in terms of that average heart rate monitoring or the kind of data, it was generally fine. It wasn't identical to the chest strap, but it was there and thereabouts. It was the kind of max heart rate reading which wasn't massively off but it was you know i did see that it, it spiked a little bit higher on the apple watch ultra um i do think it took a little bit longer to kick in uh to picking up the heart rate data now so that's something that apple does it won't start reading your heart rate until it feels it's got a reliable kind of fit to kind of deliver that information so it took a little bit long to start reading that heart rate information but ultimately it did feel or did come out a little bit higher in terms of those kind of uh, those max readings compared to a Garmin HRM Pro plus uh, chest strap monitor. On heart rate then, this is where I found the Apple Watch to be a little bit wanting. I put it up against the chest strap, mainly on sort of fairly steady runs with the occasional kind of burst of sort of increased intensity and pace just to see how it would cope when you went up through the gears. I actually found that this kind of came up slightly behind. There was a bit of sort of lag and drift when it came to sort of matching those gear shifts and changes. And also I found it to be sort of three or four beats per minute kind of higher in general every time I glanced down at my wrist over the chest strap. So there's some difference there for sure. I also found that if I came to a stop at things like traffic lights, that my heart rate chest strap would drop down to a kind of resting heart rate far quicker than the Apple Watch. And also sometimes when I went back up again, the Apple Watch would kind of overshoot. But this is basically textbook optical heart rate behavior as far as I'm concerned. This is what I've seen with pretty much every optical heart rate monitor I've tested uh, for a while now, or 
back as far as you like. And again, I just, yeah, the fact that you can pair in a chest strap to this is a win. If you want better accuracy, do it. Heart rate accuracy has actually been another strong point of Apple Watches in recent years. Ever since I think it was the Series 4 when they seriously upgraded the sensor on the watch, it's been one of the best optical heart rate monitors I've tested. That is unfortunately not the case with the Apple Watch Ultra. I don't know if it's just the fact it's a bit bigger or maybe the fact that I've been using the ocean and, and the, the ocean in this alpine loop where I've struggled sometimes to get a good snug fit. But yeah, the heart rate has been fairly poor on my runs. Often it would just gray out uh, and you know, cause it's not taking any kind of reading. And when it was reading, it would often be slightly too high. Uh, so yeah, this is a bit of a disappointment because the Apple Watch has been very good on the heart rate tracking front in the past, but you can pair an external sensor. Um, and I would definitely do that in the long term if you are using heart rate to guide your training in any way. Battery life. Well, this is a biggie, obviously. Apple Watches don't tend to kind of stack up very well when it comes to the comparison with other sort of adventure or running watches and although this now has a much longer battery life than most other apple watches it still to me doesn't really go far enough i bet i did a one hour long run burn through eight percent battery life with full gps on i did a two and a half hour run with the low power mode set on and that still burned 18 percent battery life in general usage terms i got three and a half days on a single charge out of that with that one hour run in the middle but I think it's kind of fascinating that Apple has used an you know, ultra runner doing what looks like the, the Marathon de Saab, like a de multi-stage desert run in all of their kind of marketing imagery. And to be honest, this watch probably wouldn't get you through kind of two stages, maybe three at a push of an event like that before you had to charge it. So while yes is an extension, and I know you're making a big kind of trade off here, there's so many smarts on this watch that, you know, that's it's now got a, a really sort of, good healthy battery life for all the other stuff that you're going to get but i still found that i was going to be charging this kind of every sort of two to three days perhaps a little more often if you don't mind charging that much great i personally really like with something like the enduro that i can wear it almost i must get through like a month without really worrying about it and i, I really like that it's so a big thing for me was the battery life you know it's a, probably one of the reasons i haven't really had long-term use an apple watch just because I don't like the idea of charging on a regular basis or pretty much, you know, every other day or every day, which, you know, I haven't done with other watches that I've been using um, long term for run tracking. Um, now, in terms of the Apple Watch Ultra, you are getting the biggest battery life that Apple's kind of promised. Um, potentially, you're getting two or three days here, you know, depending on what features you're using. And obviously, run tracking is going to take a hit using that GPS Um Ultimately, obviously, the dual band GPS um, kind of set up now in terms of what uh, Apple is putting in the Ultra. Um, in terms of that general day to day battery life, I have found you can get well, you know, well over two days. You can get two and a half days when you're factoring things like run tracking um, on that kind of easy kind of 20 minute run. It dropped kind of four percent in terms of that battery life. In the longer 22 miler, which was kind of over just over three hours, kind of three hours, 10 um battery life from 100 dropped to i think 77 so battery life definitely improvements from previous apple watches from a run tracking perspective i would say as well there's definitely improvements there and that's without even delving into those kind of low power modes so battery life is obviously a big feature on the ultra uh, in the past i find that apple was a little bit conservative with its battery life estimates it always says 18 hours on its you know main series watch but i found that they would always last me over a day comfortably uh, and it's kind of the case here, like it's listed at 36 hours, but I was, I've was i been getting through two days of use you know, easily enough. That's running for at least an hour on both days. So I'd tend to charge it in the morning uh, of the first day, and then I would not need to charge it again till two mornings time. You know, you could top it up here and there if you wanted to, to be extra safe. And if you are doing longer runs, then you will need to do a little bit more topping up, but it charges pretty fast and you are going to get, I think, two days of use quite reliably on it, even with you know, normal use with the always on screen on, getting your notifications, tracking outdoor activities every day. So, you know, it's nowhere near the standards of a sports watch. Like even the Epix 2 with its AMOLED screen lasts me four or five days um, when running kind of 100K weeks. And, you know, things like the Phoenix and the Enduro and the Coros watches, you're looking at weeks or months of use rather than a couple of days. But for a smartwatch that's as impressive as this with such a nice screen, you know, getting through two days is pretty reliable and it 
and it halves the amount of charging I'll do on the Apple Watch Series 7. So, you know, that's good, but you know, battery life is a very important thing to you. You are still gonna be looking outside of smartwatches in general. I do like the fact that there's a low power mode currently that retains full GPS and heart rate tracking during sports, so that's good. You do lose the always on screen, but you know, you're still getting that accurate tracking. And there is due to be another low power mode launched on the watch later this year that will take less frequent GPS and heart rate readings during your activities, you know, similar to things like Ultramax modes on sports watches that should extend the activity tracking time it offers. So the smartwatch features on the Apple Watch are obviously outstanding. This is very much where it excels. It's got the best app store available, I think. There's loads of really interesting sports apps and running apps in there that you can go and investigate from you know, very engaged developers that can really improve the experience on the watch for you. Generally, I found with it is that if there is something that you you think it's lacking in terms of your sports tracking and run tracking, someone will have had that experience and may and there will be an app out there that can remedy it for you. Uh, then you get all the useful stuff like you know, really good NFC payments through Apple Pay and travel passes and all that. It's you know it's very good smartwatch uh, and it now has kind of these upgraded navigational capabilities um, with the enhanced compass app like being able to create waypoints for things like your home or you know your car when you're out parking or if you're out on an adventure things like your tent it's very useful you know to have a list of things you can navigate to quite easily uh, and the backtrack feature is great like you can put that on at the start of a run um, and then go to the workout app and just do your run and kind of use the backtrack thing to guide you home at the end if you are lost but and like i said earlier though it is a shame that it's not integrated well within the workout app and switching between apps is a bit of a faff on the run it's very easy to press the wrong thing so i would if you were very much looking at navigational features things like workout doors are a lot better because the map is baked into the workout tracking you know screens you see also, and also if you are outside of running then there is just an apple maps app which is you know, better than navigating than just following a breadcrumb trail or trying to hit a waypoint but yeah i do like the new compass app i just think it needs to be melded together a bit more with the workout app uh, because that's primarily what i want to use it for the other thing i did try using was the um the backtrack feature where you know in the background the minute you move away from wi-fi and kind of, I guess, civilization. Apple in the background will be tracking where you've gone. If you get lost, you can go into the Compass app, press backtrack, switch it on, and it will let you kind of retrace your steps if you get lost. I tried this out and I had a bit of a mixed experience with it. I wasn't really lost in the wilderness. I was on a footpath right by the river, which is where I run. So pretty hard to get lost. But anyway, I just thought to see how it kind of sent me along the tracks and actually, it kind of kept trying to make me navigate sort of into the river or just off the path to my right. Now we're talking only by about, I don't know, maybe about like half a meter to a meter to one side or the other side in the wrong direction or slightly off track than where the path was actually going. And I guess this is down to how the GPS has picked up the routing. It might not sound like a lot, but I think if you're actually in a wilderness situation, where I know that in the new forests and places, those, that half a meter can be the difference between one track and another. That feels a little bit skew whiff to me, and I, yeah, I wasn't particularly convinced by it. I was also slightly freaked out by the fact that it knew where I'd parked my car without me even assigning it. So this is the point that it was trying to take me back to. I'd just driven somewhere, dropped off my son at school, and then gone for a, for a run. And when I flicked it open, that was where it was trying to take me back to, rather than the start of my activity. Which again, I, I you know, I was just like, oh, okay, okay, well, that's interesting. I don't really want you to know where, where I parked my car. Um, I find that a little bit creepy, if I'm really honest. Um, I don't know why. Maybe I, I my anti tech, but anyway, yeah, I used it. I wasn't really sold by it. I didn't think the kind of the navigation, the line was as clear. And I think that's one area where this, for me, the Apple Watch Ultra still sort of comes up short. Really, is in overall kind of navigation features, and the way that everything. I, I'm not quite sure it's all as integrated as nicely into the workout app as it is on something like a Garmin where you've got jump off points or you can you can scroll through screens to, to see these things within the app. I think you have to do a little bit more fiddling to sort of jump around. So quickly looking at the activity and health tracking on the watch, you're getting all the usual stuff in terms of Apple's activity rings, you know, tracking active minutes, active hours, active calories, which are very engaging. And I find, you know, I do tend to get a little bit addicted to them, even though I'm a very keen runner and don't need to worry about hitting a you know, certain active minutes target each day. Uh, and then the health tracking has got a little bit better now with the skin temperature sensor. I think the main, you know, uh, advancements here will be in women's health tracking, but 
you know, looking at your skin temperature overnight and seeing if it's strayed from your baseline, especially if it's got you know higher, yeah, it can help you see if you're maybe sickening a little bit, getting a little bit ill. That's what I used to use from things like the Aura Ring. And with my use so far, the and the temperature readings from the Apple Watch Ultra have been in line with the Aura Ring at night. So that's good in terms of its accuracy. And then you get things like ECGs, blood oxygen saturation measurements, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and actually, the temperature sensing is now a good reason to wear the watch at night uh, because the sleep tracking remains very basic on the watch. You do get a nice graph of your sleep state ages and the time spent in each you know sleep zone like REM sleep and deep sleep but you know the sleep tracking on the Apple Watch still lags well behind what you'll get from things like Fitbit and Huawei and Polar though again there are third-party apps you can uh, download to significantly increase the quality of the sleep tracking on the watch if you wish. So for the audience that basically wants an Apple Watch uh, and really wants to get the smarts and the nice design that you get with it, but doesn't want to lose out too much when it comes to sports tracking, I think the Apple Watch Ultra is a little bit of a dream. Like, and I'm very much that audience. I've loved, I've always loved the Apple Watch. I really like how it looks. I like, you know, having it on my wrist for general use. But I usually had to go to third-party apps in the past to improve the sports tracking to a level that it would support my running. Now, I don't think you really need to. The native sports tracking is excellent. There's a lap button. Um, you're going to get a really good experience from the watch, uh, just lacking that kind of mapping integration a little bit, which you can get from other apps. However, you're going to pay a lot for that you know, privilege, uh, and the cheaper Apple Watches in the range will provide a lot of that already. So the Series 8 will be getting all the, you know, the Watch OS 9 enhancements. It costs half the price of the Ultra, and you're going to get a fantastic experience from that watch as well. I don't doubt that we haven't tested it yet and even the older versions like the Series 6 and Series 7 they are always very accurate watches for me uh, you don't get the lap button you don't get the larger screen or the slightly bigger battery life but you do get the key improvements to the watch which I think are in the sports tracking for someone like myself a very keen runner an obsessive runner having a bigger screen having a lap button having an extra day of battery life are all really big bonuses that might make you want to you know to pay the extra for the Ultra but, but I think kind of all Apple Watch users are going to benefit from these changes a lot and it does make it a more serious running watch across the board and kind of better than any other smartwatch I've tested like true smartwatches have never been that good in the native sports tracking the Apple Watch is always able to get around that with its fantastic app store but now you don't necessarily need to do that to get a very good experience so it's still not quite at the level of a dedicated sports watch um, and you know if you are all about sports and just want a few kind of key smarts like music storage and NFC payments and there are lots of Garmin's that offer that for less or for more than the Apple Watch Ultra you know, things like the 400 255 are really fantastic sports watches that have those kind of key smart features um, and you know not as attractive as the Apple Watch but they will you know do a better job of sports tracking and you'll get you know several days of battery life rather than two and then if you can spend it's a little bit more to get the Garmin Epix too but um, then you are getting such a great sports tracking experience with training analysis, built-in maps and all that. Uh, and you're getting a bright AMOLED screen that really is great. You know, I've lived with this watch for the best part of a year and I really enjoy looking at it. I think the Apple Watch Ultra is a little bit more attractive. I think it's a really fantastic looking watch and the screen's beautiful. But the Epix is a much better sports tracker natively and you get a lot more for it. Plus, you know, four or five days looking towards a week of battery life rather than just a couple. I think the Ultra is a very is a very interesting addition to the sports watch market. But it's really expensive and you know, there are people who will dismiss it out of hand on battery life alone and that's fair enough. But I actually think the experience of using it to track your running is very good. And if you don't mind charging it a bit more, then it does stand up well against true sports watches. So my verdict on the Apple Watch Ultra then, based on the five days that I've had it, I'm not sure it yet kind of has convinced me that I'd want to replace my Garmin Enduro yet, mainly because of that battery life and the fact that I don't really use all of the other smarts maybe as much as other people might. But I'm looking forward to giving this a proper test over the coming weeks and maybe it's going to change my mind, so we will see. So initial verdict on the Apple Watch Ultra as a smart watch option for runners. And from a design point of view, it is a big watch. It looked big on my slim wrist, but ultimately, it's been comfortable to wear. I do wish it was a little bit slimmer. I think that right side of the case, I wish it would come in a little bit more and I'm sure that will do over kind of iterations of this watch. The screen has been nice and bright and I think that's a massive plus in terms of when you're kind of in those more challenging, bright outdoor kind of light conditions. Um, in terms of that data and accuracy, I think the level of data has definitely stepped up in terms of what you can see um, in the app, in terms of those advanced running metrics, in terms of the way things like heart rate um, data is presented. And I think that's a massive plus in terms of what you're getting here on the Ultra. Um, in terms of that accuracy, I think the GPS has been pretty good. You know, not the best I've used, but it's been very, very good as it has been. 
on the Apple Watches before it, particularly the kind of Series 6 and Series 7. Um, heart rate has been a little bit different for me. I have found that the heart rate monitoring performance on the Series 7, uh, particularly, is probably the best I've used on a smartwatch for running in, in terms of reliability. Um, so, yeah, I don't know whether that, you know this is going to replicate that performance and I'm whether, wondering whether that is to do with the case size. Um, and then also battery life. Now, battery life has, well, I mean, it held up pretty well in that long run that I did with it. Um, I've, I've tested previous Apple Watches at marathon distance and I found the battery life drop off to be a bit more severe. So it looks like it retains that battery life a bit better. Um, and then obviously you have those capacities to use those low power modes as well. Now, is this, the, is this going to be the best smartwatch option at this price for runners? Keeping in mind, this is for iPhone users as well. I think what you have to consider here is that you've got something like the Garmin Epix, which is a little bit more expensive, about $100, $100 more expensive. But ultimately, you are getting that kind of core Garmin run tracking experience, all that kind of training analysis that you might have to delve into third party apps on the Apple Watch. And then you're getting potentially, well, you know, real more battery life if you're not using, I think always on display, you're getting slightly a bit more on the Garmin Epics uh, based on my initial testing. And obviously without that always on display, you're gonna get longer as well. So from a battery point of view, you're getting more there too. So, you know, I'm a, you know, a long-term Garmin Epics user. I've been using it alongside the Apple Watch in, in you know, Ultra in these initial tests. And something for me, suggest that maybe the epics might be a bit of a better option even though it's a little bit more expensive than the um apple Watch ultra obviously that works for android and ios as well but i think early doors i think there's definitely a lot of promise here on this watch i was ready to be very skeptical about what you're getting the battery life has improved i think the presentation of data the hardware is very good as well um and yeah it's expensive just like the garmin epics as well but i think there's potentially i definitely 